In this presentation, we're going to demonstrate how to use the XY plot feature in opctrend.net. We're going to use an existing example that we have that installs with the software. This is the dashboard example that we have. So we have the uh, WPF trend is the first uh, screen that you might see. And uh, then we have the uh, trend.net uh, component that is visible here looking at real-time data but on the x-axis we currently have time uh, on the x-axis instead what we want to do is define one of the pens defined in the trend window to be uh, on the x-axis as a variable and then all of the other pens will be on the y-axis to do this what we'll do is we'll right click on the trend to modify the x-axis property under the x-axis property, we'll simply set the axis type to xy plot. And then basically the first pen in the list becomes default the x-axis variable. So here we see the random and the sign signals changing values um, and they are following a corresponding uh, x coordinate based upon the ramp signal. If we want to define a different pen to be on the x axis, what we'll do is go to the pens property, and under the pens dialog, what we'll do is we'll define the sign signal now to be the x axis variable. If none of the pens are defined with the XY plot axis value set to true, then we're just going to use the first pen in the trend order as the X axis. But if we define one of the pens now to be uh, the XY plot X axis variable, and then we'll select OK, we need to also change the scale to match up that particular pen for the sign signal. It has a range from 1 to minus 1 and so we'll come back in the x-axis and we have the x-axis range high we'll set that to 1 and the x-axis range low we'll set that to minus 1 that matches up the scale of the signal and now we have the uh, full range of the sign signal where we're um, showing the ramp and the random signals now on the um, trend and it does support all of the different functions that we might want to do. Um, it does support uh, data zoom capabilities. Uh, it does also support um, saving the data to uh, a binary file and loading that back up. We can take a look at the data grid and we see that we still have the same raw data that we would have in a regular um, time scale where we have the time and the individual values of each pen which can be copied to a clipboard using the copy to clipboard function but we see that the values are actually moving um, back and forth following the coordinates of the uh, sign signal on its x-axis and um, some of the other features that uh, are still supported of course historical replay that can be done with the user interface or programmatically and also we can implement the um, the rotation to take a look a closer look at uh, individual signals in a different perspective So now I'm going to go into Visual Studio and show you how to create this application uh, from scratch. If you have already uh, worked with opctrend.net, this might be a bit of a refresher for you. So at this point, you could go on to work on other projects. But if you're new to opcsystems.net, you may want to watch one of our other training videos on opctrend.net itself. That can be found under the training page uh, from our website at opcsystems.com and there you can go down to scroll to see the particular video that we're looking for is called opctrend.net and in that video it walks you through all of the different properties that you would find in a trend control and it does demonstrate some of the things I'm about to show you as well. So we're going to use Visual Studio 2010 the trend control can also be incorporated into a WPF application as well and we have source examples of that that install with the software. Under the program group opcsystems.net we can see a WPF sources example. That's how to incorporate the trend control into a WPF application and also it shows you how to programmatically define pens and other properties this way. 
So in Visual Studio 2010, we can create either a Visual Basic or C Sharp application or C++. So I'm going to create the uh, default of a C Sharp application and we'll choose a Windows Form application. So if, if this is the first time you've used uh, opcsystems.net in your development environment, you would want to right-click on the toolbox and select Choose Items to define to select the OPC Trend Control. We notice in Visual Studio 2010, by default, we don't see the trend control. That's because it needs the full target framework set under the project properties. Let's do that. If we go to the project and right-click to select Properties, we see under the application tab that we have the target framework set to just the client profile. If we set it to the full framework version, we'll then see the trend control available. We're going to get a dialog that says we want to confirm that we're changing it to the full framework target. And now when we open the form again, we see the alarm, gauge, and trend controls available in, for Visual Studio 2010. For Visual Basic, it is slightly different. You'll want to watch the video for Visual Studio 2010, it's a short uh, one-minute video that describes setting the target framework in your Visual Studio application. So near the bottom of the training page, you'll see a Visual Studio 2010 video. Let's expand the form out a little bit, and let's add in a trend control. We see a design time view of the trend control. We can now right click on the trend control or hit F4 to go to properties of the control. One of the first properties I'd like to set is the anchor property so that when we change the size of the form in runtime that the trend control changes size with it. Next we'll go down to the chart rates. This is the overall time frame that we want to keep track of information and we'll set that to 60 seconds. You can set that to any time frame you'd like, but you also need to have a corresponding sample rate that will match up with a total number of 3,600 samples or less. For example, if I set the t time frame to one hour, this, the lowest sample rate that I could use is one second. Next, we'll define what pens we want to trend in the trend control under the pens property. Use the browse button to the right and select the service that you want to trend the data from. If you want to deploy this application remotely, you may want to include the network node name or IP address or the registered domain name of the originating data source of where the tags are coming from. You can also connect directly to OPC items using the direct OPC connection. I'm going to select the sign signal, the ramp signal, and the random signal. I'm going to define a few of the colors to differentiate the pens from each other. I'll set the sign signal to red. We'll change the line style of the red to a tube. I think you've seen this in the other video. It's a similar type of uh, design. And we'll set the uh, ramp. Uh, leave that to blue, but we'll set the line style to an ellipsoid. And with the random, we will set uh, the color to green. and set, uh, we'll demonstrate also the marker style property. We'll set that to a sphere and change the marker fill color to green as well. With a marker size of 20, that'll make the uh, spheres a little bit larger in the trend window. The other thing that I know uh, is that the sign range has a range from one to minus one on its scale. So we'll come down to the bottom of the properties and set the y-axis high range to one and the y-axis low range to minus one. And then we'll select OK. That's what our trend uh, control looks like in design time. Let's improve the look of that by going to the views property. And with the views property, we'll set the lighting to metallic luster. Now that's a better looking trend. And then we can also change some of the colors, maybe the uh, back wall color. Let's change the back wall color from white to black. Now, if we went into runtime, 
we would see the same data that we had in the other example. We see that on the x-axis we currently have 60 seconds as far as a time frame. Now let's change that in design time like we did in runtime earlier by going to the x-axis property. So I'll go to the properties and under the x-axis property I'll set the axis type to XY plot. I'm going to use the sign signal for the X axis, so I'll change the axis XY plot range high to 1 and range low to minus 1. And then we'll go to the pens property. and under the sign signal we'll set the XY plot axis value to true. If you have multiple pens defined with this property set to true it will just use the first one that it comes across as the X axis. Now let's go into runtime and we'll see that the x-axis has now changed its scale from a time range to now be minus one to one and we see the ramp values and random values plotting their course for the last sixty seconds worth of data now if you needed a longer time span that's very simple that is again defined under the chart rates and design time here it's called update rates in runtime and we could just change that to any kind of time we would like it to be so we could make a new time frame of 120 seconds. This is a new sample rate and time frame combination that the service has seen. So now it's collecting trend information and casting it real time for that particular combination. So I have let the full two minutes uh, elapse in time so that we can see the full time frame of a two minute time period. And we see that new values of the ramp and random values as they come in are being plotted in relation to the sign signal as it's also changing. And so this is uh, using the XY plot feature um, in design time and also we see the values can also be dynamic uh, in runtime. One of the features that's uh, slightly different, um, it is still the same as the date and time, but it is the data cursor and there is really no way to define the data cursor based upon either of the axes. So when you're scrolling the data cursor either with the user mouse or in design time, what you're doing is you're going on a percentage of the time frame. So if I set the data cursor right in the middle, I'm at 50% of the current time scale. Still on the bottom legend or wherever the legend you have defined, you do see the number of values changing based upon the uh, data cursor and there are two data cursors. So we have a two minute time frame in cache and if we come back and modify the chart update rates, we also have the one minute. and we can swap back and forth in that from the user interface or programmatically as well. If you have any more questions about this product feature or any of the other product features of opcsystems.net, visit our website at opcsystems.com. There you can download the product opcsystems.net from our downloads page, view our online training from our training page, and you can contact us under the contact us and to find your local sales representative, use the sales page. We have distributors located all over the world that can assist you.